Conservative MP and Care and Mental Health Minister Gillian Keegan joins me. Good to have you on, Minister. Where's the money going? How will it be spent? Good morning to you. It will be spent between now and March on short-term workforce pressures. Um, so you'll hear from many people, I think the CQC today, but but from many care home um, people who work in the care sector, that there there are massive uh, pressures on this workforce. Um, and first of all, as, as the care minister, first time on as care minister, I just want to say a massive thank you to the 1.5 million people who work in social care. And it's always got elements of pressure because it it's a growing demographic, so there's a growing need every year. But of course we've got uh, huge competition for uh, labour at the moment so um, it, it's there to make sure that we can uh, get some extra capacity in the system to uh, see us up to March. Will it help with what I read uh, is there a growing problem with providing mental health care as well particularly for young people as a result of the pandemic no one's fault appointments couldn't be kept and now there's a bit of a and I read a bit of a tsunami of folk who need attention minister. There's separate monies for that. So we've got £500 million, which we put in place for mental health recovery to increase the number of appointments, um, particularly uh, for young people as well, uh, children and young people, but also for adults across the system. Uh, so that was to get, I think, 345,000 extra appointments so it's uh, to, or extra people seen. So we have put £500 million into the mental health recovery. Um, and of course, across the whole piece, £5.4 into uh, recovery of our NHS electives, etc. OK, so you're in the, the, the care and mental health field. When I next see you in the House of Commons, will you be wearing a mask, Minister? Well, I, I did wear one yesterday because I've developed a bit of a cough. Oh, uh, so I didn't I'm sorry want to, to hear be, that. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, everyone looks at you strange now. Don't if you if you've got a cough. So uh, I did. I did wear one yesterday. I think as as we get into winter, and I think you know more and more people start coughing and spluttering. I think many many more people will wear masks. But it is, as we've said, an individual choice. We've all been, you know, we've all been educated on this in in, in the last sort of 19, 20 months. So you know, we don't need to tell people uh, what they need to do, how many times they need to wash their hands, etc. We've all been educated on this, um, and I think the the British people are, are, are showing a lot. Lot of common sense actually I mean many people are wearing them uh, in the tube and uh, if you go into into crowded rooms or offices many people are wearing them on the way in as they're moving around right so do you subscribe to the Jacob Rees Mogg view on all of this do you minister that you're all a convivial bunch and the Conservative parties you all get on so well you can don't need to wear masks well, he's been there longer than I have, so maybe he knows uh, people more. But uh, no, I don't. I, I mean, it's not because. I mean, obviously, COVID doesn't uh, doesn't look at whether you get on with someone or not. It's uh, it's an infection. Um, but I do think it's important. You know, we know we're going to have challenges over winter. That's why we've set out the Plan A, Plan B. That's why we're trying to get everybody the booster jab. And one thing I just wanted to say, as well as the booster jab, oh, is yes. also from today, young people um, aged 12 to 15 can actually go on the national booking system and book a walk-in or a GP. So it's the first time they've been able to do that if they haven't had their jab at school. Do you think, when is the gap between the second jab and the booster currently, I believe it's six months and one day, that needs to come down, doesn't it, Minister, to five months? <laughs> Well, the JCVI are the people who look at all the evidence. They were the people who advised six months. They look at the data all the time, lots of different data. Um, so, you know, they're the people who, who will make the decision if it has to change. They have changed between dose timing in the past. You know, they've changed, uh, um, you know, from three weeks to, to 12 weeks to eight weeks. You know, that has uh, adapted as they look at uh, the various um, data that they have. But it's only them that could give us that advice. And um, But our, our job, if well, they, are we asking, they do... Are you, are, are you asking them. I mean, oh, we ask them to look at that all the time. So, right. you know, how to optimise, um, you know, our, our but, vaccine deployment. But if they do, then all I can say is we will be ready um, to, to, you know, to do whatever it is they uh, advise us well, on. You, you say that, Minister, but obviously you won't necessarily be aware of this, but I'm taking a lot of calls from people around the country. There does seem to be a regional issue here in that you're absolutely right. In some instances, in South West London, people are being contacted that they're in their 50s and they're saying, come along, you can have your... And in others, we've got people in their 70s who can't get their booster jab. Have we got a regional problem, Minister? 
No, we haven't. But it is more complex as a rollout because of this six months, or whether it was five months or six months. Because what, what happened in the first rollout is within your age group or within your um, sort of, uh, if you had some, some specific cohort, um, yeah. issues, cohort, you went forward, everyone went forward in that cohort. Obviously, now you've got this factor of not more, you know, six months and one day, and it does add a bit of complexity. But we had the, the, the most amount of bookings uh, on Wednesday this week, which is 234,000. Um, in the in the national booking system, so no, I don't I don't think we've got regional issues at all. We've we're very you know we've we've set up we've got more vaccination centres than we had this time last year. We, we were used to so, doing so it. We set up. Why, but the, it is a why bit the slip complex. in the numbers being vaccinated? What do you put that down to, Minister? I think it's just the, there's the cohorts that are open, the amount of people who can be done. I think there's um, about f more than four million who have been done. But you know, not. I mean, I can't come forward, for example, because my well, last child is not six months. Ridiculous. Well, I'm, I'm over fifty. Well, I'm over fifty. I don't know how the fifty-year-old has it. got their jab uh, that that uh, early. But you know, there is that uh, You've complexity. You've obviously lived a blameless but, life. You look far, far younger. Uh, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> many people are coming in on the chat now, I'm sure. Um, but um, no, it, it is slightly more complex, but I have no doubt at all. You're honestly We've telling me that before. there are stocks all around the country, Minister. You're, you're yes. confident. Okay, yes, we'll we're confident in the stocks, we're confident in the GPs, we're confident in the supply, we're confident we can do it. The booking system obviously is, is there uh, to be used. It's slightly more complex because of this six months and one day, so it does add a complexity. But I'm pretty sure that, you know, that this picture will change. If you remember at the beginning of the, of the vaccine deployment, the first couple of weeks, there was the same tension. Yes. Everybody's so desperate to get it. You know, why haven't I had it? My neighbours had it. Somebody else's friends well, wonder... had it, etc. I wonder just lastly if I can get a little bit personal about a couple of your colleagues because in that first rollout it was vital that the government was seen to be on the front foot and doing all the media appearances and there was the great Zahawi, the great Nadim Zahawi fielding the questions, forcing through like a, I don't know, like a, a, a winger in rugby racing up to score a try. That was the great... Maggie Throop. And not being personal at all but she is a minister. Where is she? Minister. Well, I sat next to her yesterday when she gave a well, statement. Well, I'm very pleased to hear it. But where um, is she on the, on the media? With our masks on. Um, was she, I mean, she? I mean, I'm here today. Um, and it's great to have you. But, but you, you will She'll agree that the, 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 the great Zahai was a tremendous performer on the, was, on the media, wasn't he? Yes, and he's been an MP for longer and Maggie's been a minister for three weeks. But don't underestimate Maggie. She is a biomedical scientist and she has an awful lot to offer in this space. So uh, she but, she will be out and about. You will get She will get the, the delight of meeting you soon, I'm sure, Nick. Well, well just lastly, in, in the, the, the same level of time that she's been in place, we had zero appearances on the media. The great Zahawi, 17. Why is she hiding away? She's not. I mean, Per and I have both been in post, these new posts, for uh, two and a half, three weeks today. Three weeks today. All right. I mean, that's not a lot of time. Um, and actually, she's very much focused on obviously getting to grips with their brief and getting the boosters rolled out across the country. And as I say, she gets, she was in Parliament twice yesterday answering an urgent question and also um, right. uh, giving a statement. But don't underestimate her. She's got a lot to offer and she is, as I say, a biomedical scientist. Um, so she's right. a great fit for if, the if, role. If you can mutter through her mask to come and uh, have a chat with me, I would be most grateful. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Gillian Keegan, who is a Care and Mental Health Minister, appearing here. Oh, and congratulations on your appointment. Sorry, I should have said that. Congratulations on that.